Welcome to worship again. I would say on this bright, sunny summer's morning, but it's raining here in Liverpool. And I don't know where it is, but if you're watching or what the weather's like for you. But we are in the middle of the summer and we are going to continue thinking about some of those things that perhaps you might do through the summer. And today we're going to go up the mountain. We're going up the mountain with the 12 spies to view the land and explore the land and to look and see what is coming for God's people, what God has promised for them. We're going into the hill country and explore, says Moses, to the 12 spies. We'll be looking at that from Numbers 13. But as we come together to worship today, there is sad news. Um, Many of you will be aware that that Sam Perry died during the week, and uh, we pray for his family in these days as we just wait for news on what will happen next but we just pray continue to pray for sam um, sam's family through these days but there is some good news today as well it's a year for hannah and wes since they got married in the middle of lockdown um, with very restricted people it's their first wedding anniversary today so we say congratulations uh, to them as well as we come into worship today we're going to sing some of my favourite songs from the last year. We, um, with the invitation to go and look and explore, we go and look at what God's got in store for us, but with the experiences that we've had. And so we're going to think about some of the experiences we've had and uh, we're going to sing some of my favourite songs. If they're not your favourite songs, then I apologise. Um, But you will have the option because at the end of the month is a bank holiday and whether you're watching or whether you're here, if you would like to choose a song for Sunday the 29th of August and uh, just say in 20, 30 words, um, 20, 30 seconds, um, why you've chosen that song, then um, please see us and uh, it may be a song, it may be a solo, it may be one of the section pieces. Your chance to contribute on that day and to share why that has brought you blessing through the last year. Um, If no one comes forward, then you'll have my favourites again, so that's fine. Or Lynn's, as she's just pointed out. But here we are to worship. We're going to sing two songs, one that we've used um, a number of times, one that we only were introduced to a couple of weeks ago. We're going to sing The Lion and the Lamb. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? We have a great God Who can stop the Lord Almighty? So we'll join together in that. And then we're going to go straight into the song that Dan and uh, his family introduced to us a couple of weeks ago. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And when we introduced that, some of you I know wanted to dance. So you get that opportunity today. The Lion and the Lamb. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's join together, shall we?
The sunrise in the morning to the sundown in the night, our God's glory shines out brightly with an everlasting light. Yet He stoops down from the heavens, promotes the poor out of the dirt, rescues needy from the rubbish dump, and takes away their hurt. He turns paupers into princes, seats them on a royal throne. His grace provides for everyone a place in His joyful home. From the sunrise in the morning to the sundown in the night, our God's glory shines out brightly with an everlasting light. Yet He stoops down from the heavens, promotes the poor out of the dirt, rescues needy from the rubbish dump and takes away their hurt. He turns paupers into princes, seats them on a royal throne. His grace provides for everyone a place in His joyful home. Father God, this morning we want to praise your name, we want to glorify you, we want to lift you up because you're a great God and we know that no one and nothing can stop you because you are almighty and so we have many reasons to praise you today, we have many reasons to glorify your name, many reasons to lift you up and Father we pray that you will accept our worship, you will accept our praise, you will accept our thanks, our adoration for who you are. 
And Father, we, we thank you for the work you do in our lives. We thank you that you bring us together. We thank you that you, you just bless us each day in so many different ways. And yet, Father, in our, in our celebration of who you are, we also want to give thanks for, for Sam and we pray for his family in these days and for others who mourn in our fellowship. We pray your continued comfort and blessing upon families who are hurting and mourning the loss of loved ones through this time. And loving Father God, you invite us to climb the mountain and to look and to see your promises, to see your promised land, to see what the future holds, to see the possibilities. And Holy Spirit, I invite you not just for myself, but for each one of us here in this building, for those who will be watching online. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come and open our eyes that we will see. We will see all of the promises laid out and we will claim those promises and we will discover more and more of your amazing blessings for us, Father God. And so be glorified, be with us, bless us and lead us on, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And as we climb the, the mountains and as we look at all the possibilities, all the promises of God, we have the opportunity with another song that has been introduced through the last year of touching heaven. We touch heaven and yet as we touch heaven, we discover that our lives change here on earth. And so we're going to sing together, touching heaven, changing earth. And uh, with Heather being at Southport leading worship there, Graham is going to bring us the announcements today. Thank you. Let's join together. I'm going to give you the announcements like you really need them because you've seen them all online already. But it is a joy to welcome so many of you into our meeting here today. And we're particularly pleased 
to see you here. We also greet those who are worshipping with us online. We're glad you continue to join with us. You will have already heard the news that we've had another promotion to glory this week of Sam Perry, one of our adherent members. Sam was a, a generous and loyal supporter, particularly of our community program. But we know there are others who have been affected by promotions to glory over this past week. Our own uh, niece, Daniela, her mum, as she would call her, was also promoted to glory this week, losing her battle against illness. And there are others who still feel the effects of grief in these days. I just ask you to continue to uphold all of our friends who have suffered from death in these recent days. There just seems to have been a whole spate of people passing on. We've got through, if you like, the majority of COVID. We know it's still around, seemingly unscathed. And all of a sudden, life seems to give you a little bit of a kick. Um, just to remind us that we need all to remain safe in these days and do all we can to say, stay safe. This is why I have my wet wipes with me this morning, because I'm going to pass this microphone on to somebody else in a minute. So just to be absolutely certain, I've got my wet wipes here. We continue to have restrictions within our building for the moment, just to make sure that we all stay safe. If you're a younger person, much younger than me, then this afternoon, there is a youth activity. I think it's on your screen. Um, if you need any information about that activity, the person to ask is Jessica, who's over here. Now, I know if you're watching online, you won't know that Jessica's over there. But for those that are here, if you need any information about this afternoon's youth activity, then do speak to, Je to Jess, and she will be happy to give you that information. Can I remind you that although we don't uh, do collections within our meeting at the moment, our offering plate is here and we would be more than happy to receive your offerings and gifts to make sure that we're able to keep our work steady in these particular days. Our community program during the week continues there's been a fantastic amount of work being done each week in recent times with packages being prepared during the summer program for a whole range of families. Around about 30 families each week have been receiving packages which include crafts and activities for children as well as food gifts. Thank you for supporting that program. And finally, if you have nothing to do on Wednesday evening, or even if you do have something to do but would like to do something different, there's an opportunity to join an online Bible study. It's a one-off study. It will be online. Good fun to join in. Um, I might even join in myself this week. Um, I've missed a couple recently, but this week I may join in. So if you want something to do on Wednesday evening around about 7 p.m., turn the TV off, and instead join in Zoom for a Bible study. Bless you, and thank you for all of your support of the core. Thank you, Graham, for the announcements. As we continue in worship, our songsters are going to sing together, Let the Morning Bring. And then Hannah, I can actually finally say Hannah is going to come and bring the kids zone to us. It would be so lovely to have it live as well. So thank you, Hannah. So let the morning bring, and then over to Hannah. Thank you. Let the morning bring me, let the morning bring. Let the morning bring me. 
Okay, let's take this off. The Lord told Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan. This is the promised land that I've been telling you about. I'm going to give it to all of you Israelites as your home. So Moses chose 12 people, one from each of the tribes. They were all leaders. You see, at this point, God was in command. He sent them with the reminder that this was going to be their home. They were going to live here. The men went, and after 40 days, they returned. They returned from checking out the land, and they reported what they'd found to Moses and to the whole community of Israel. Two of those spies, named Caleb and Joshua, said, yeah, let's go. Yep, let's go right now. It is fantastic. And to prove it, they brought back some branches of fruit which my glamorous assistants are going to bring in. They're not very glamorous, but they're assistants all the same. Look at this fruit. The fruit they brought back was incredible. It was bountiful and amazing. So heavy, two people had to carry it. They told Moses that the promised land was amazing. It was flowing with milk and honey, which meant that it was rich and full of the best foods and lands. But the ten other spies reported something different. They said, no, no way. This is not for us. We're not going. No. Now, I need some people who can do a little bit of reading and aren't too afraid of balloons. Have I got some volunteers who might come and uh, cut open a balloon for us? Got some scissors ready? I need five balloons cut open. Oh. Am I going to have to do it myself? Chris, do you want to do the first one for us? Now, we're not going to let them pop here. A green one, please. Oh. So if you could cut it at the top so it doesn't pop. Inside of these balloons, I've got what some of those ten spies said. Some of those reasons why they couldn't go. Now, can you get the message out, Chris?
Okay, while Chris is having a look at the excuse, who's going to come and do the next balloon for us? We're too small. We can't go. We're too small. Come and do a balloon then. There we go. If I pull it up, can you? Right, oops. Can you get the message out? What excuse have we got here? I still need three more people. No, four more people. Apologies, can't count. What excuse has this spy given? The people are powerful. We can't go. The people there, they're too powerful and we're too small. Who's going to do the next one for us? Come on then. There you go. Can you get the message out? Thank you. There we go. Chris, could you help for me, please? You're right. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. We're supposed to be doing it without popping, Chris. Fab. We are too weak. There's no point. We can't go. We're too weak. Super. Hold on to that one. We're going to need it again in a minute. What does this one say? There are giants. <gasps> we can't go. The people there, they are giants. Oh, my goodness. We don't want to go. They're too big. We're too small. They're giants. The cities have high walls. There's no point us going. The walls, they're too high. The city has high walls. And the last one here, what does it say? The, the towns have strong protection. That's it. We can't go. They have too strong protection. Can you hold on to those excuses? Because we're going to want them again. So for those 10 spies, what they were saying is, it's a really nice idea. But there's no point dreaming about it. We're never going to be able to capture it. The towns are too well protected. We must forget about it. We can't go. Those 10 spies managed to convince all the other Israelites that certain doom was coming. If they went, they would be in big trouble. You see, those 10 spies, they stopped trusting God. They doubted that God was going to be there to give them that land. So the other Israelites went, well, in that case, we won't go. But Joshua and Caleb, they reminded everyone of God's promise. No, God can do it. God will do it. God has promised to. You see, God had already led them out of slavery, taken them through the desert and provided for them again and again and again. He took them right to the border of that new land, and yet still his people doubted him. They refused to trust him, thinking that they knew better than God. Now, my spies around here, could you bring your message back to this table? Because I think there might be some secret messages on the backs. Oh, we've got some secrets appearing here. 
If you haven't got one but would like to come and see, please do. You dip it back in, that's fine. Super. Oh, I've got an S. An S has appeared. Oh, and an exclamation mark. Let's see what the others are. Do you want to come and do yours? When we've got all those letters appearing, they will make a word. I wonder if you older ones could help the little ones to see what the word will be. Today, we can know that God's promises are true. We have seen that Jesus rose from the dead. Peter and hundreds of others told everybody they put their life on the lines to prove that Jesus had risen from the dead. And the challenge for us is will we live by God's promises? Will we trust the plans that God has for us? Now, can my spies see a word in these letters? What does our word say? That's your letter, T. What word have we got here? T R T R U S T. Can anybody help them? We've got the letters T R U S and T. What word have we got? Trust. We've got the word trust. Thank you. Can you pop them on the table? Thank you very much to my spies. You see, those spies really knew deep down that God had looked after them. But still, they didn't trust him. In our lives, will we be like the ten spies saying, No, God, I just don't believe you. I don't trust you. I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to do it my way. Or... Will we be like Caleb and Joshua, who went, well, life isn't going to be easy. It's not going to be perfect. But we have a God who is greater, stronger, and more trustworthy than anyone out there. Will we choose to trust? Thank you. That was brilliant, wasn't it? It's good to have Hannah live doing it, but the message from it, learn to trust. So thank you very much, Hannah, and all your little helpers as well, and the bigger helpers as well, of course. (laughs) The Sing Company are going to sing to us virtually as well. I want to know if my saviour is your saviour.
my Savior, your Savior, we stand on the edge of something amazing because we have an amazing, all-powerful God. And the question for each of us is, are we going to trust our God? Are we going to trust him to fulfill his promises for us as individuals and for us as a community and for his world? And uh, we explored that, and we're going to continue to explore that. Our Bible reading from Numbers chapter 13. I'm not going to read the first verses. The first verses give us the name of the 12 tribes and the tribe from which those um, men came from. But in verse 17, Moses gave the men these instructions as he sent them out to explore the land. Go north through the Negev into the hill country. See what the land is like and find out whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many. See what kind of land they live in. Is it good or bad? Do their towns have walls or are they unprotected like open camps? Is the soil fertile or poor? Are there many trees? Do your best to bring back samples of the crops you see. So they went up and explored the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob near Lebo Hamath. Going north, they passed through the Negev and arrived at Hebron where Ahiman, Sheshai and Talmai, all descendants of Anak, lived. The ancient town of Hebron was founded seven years before the Egyptian city of Zoan. When they came to the valley of Eshkol, they cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes, so large that it took two of them to carry it on a pole between them. They also brought back samples of the pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eshkol, which means cluster, because the cluster of grapes the Israelites' men cut there. After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses and Aaron and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the community what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. But the people living there are powerful and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. The Amalekites live in the Negev and the Hittites, Jebusites and Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge, we even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought too. Amen. One of those Bible stories we, we read as children and we tell our children about. But in this summer program, we have an opportunity to go up the mountain and to explore and to look at the promises and what God has in store for us. And we have a choice to either be like Caleb and Joshua or like the other ten spies. We're going to be exploring some of that in a while. We have a God. He lavishes grace as our burdens grow greater. Lavishes grace. We often think he giveth more grace. A God who lavishes grace upon us. Everlasting arms. So lean hard. Lean on the everlasting arms. We're going to join in together with this song. Then the band is going to bring us a lovely piece. Here is love vast as the ocean before Paul, uh, Major Paul, comes and uh, shares his testimony with us. Thank you. Sends us more strength as our labor. 
When Rita and I retired from active service as Salvation Army officers on the 1st of April 2020, we expected life would probably be a little easier. We would be taking it easy, going to coffee in garden centres, all the kind of things that retired people kind of do. But unfortunately, life wasn't like that at all. Covid kicked in, yes, and we were locked down, but also had a number of health issues that were totally unexpected. And as a result, I found myself in hospital for longer than I would have wanted to have been. And whilst I was there, um, the room I was in was in isolation and I just had, I wasn't able to get off my bed because of tubes and wires and things. And as I lay there, I began to understand a bit more about my walk with God and about appreciating life differently. When we were in ministry, our work was very much dealing with people who were in crisis situations in life. They'd tried everything and they'd come to nowhere and they had found themselves in a crisis situation. Now life is different for me and for Rita too, I guess, yes. And as I lay there, I began to realise the, the smaller things of life that were important. Since we moved to our house here in Widnes, um, I've learned to appreciate more and more the, the bird life around here. We have sparrows and we have blackbirds and we have robins and all sorts of birds coming in the garden. And I've enjoyed their singing, particularly first thing in the morning. And as I was lying in the hospital, I was kind of saying to the Lord, you know, I've really enjoyed music. I'm missing it here. I can't get to any. And those who know me know I love music and I couldn't get to any. And that morning, God sent a songster to me. There was a blackbird that came and sang just by my window every morning and every evening. The music was so beautiful, it almost moved me to tears. And when I came home, again, there was a blackbird that sang in the chimney pot just over by our back garden. And I have learnt in recent months that it is the small things in life where we often see the Lord working. Those small things when you just don't know how it's going to be and God comes in and he touches that situation and he makes it work. I don't know what the future is going to be for us. We'll just wait and see. But I do know that God is going to be with us and that he's going to bless us. I guess we're in a time of change, particularly in the army. We don't know where the future is going to work out, what kind of army this will be in five years time, in two years time. But I know that God's going to be with us. And in those small things of life, he's going to bless us and be with us. 
I was listening to some music the other morning and it was some music called A Love Supreme. And I have proved God to be supreme in everything that he does. And I would honestly say this morning, if for you, it's not an experience. Ask him to make it real. Maybe you've been a salvationist all your life, like me. And you really haven't had that real encounter with him. Ask for it today. Life will never be the same. Bless you. Thank you, Paul, for your testimony. What a challenge there for each one of us as well, isn't it? Um, to make that love supreme a reality within our hearts and our lives. And we also recognize that Paul recorded that testimony earlier this week for us. I think it was probably Monday when he recorded that testimony, but he has since gone back into hospital um, and undergoing tests. So let's just share in prayer together for Paul just now. Loving Heavenly Father, we just bring Paul before you now. We thank you for his testimony. We thank you that you are a reality within his heart and within his life. And Lord, as he's in hospital now, we just ask that you will bless him, that you will place your hand of healing upon him, whether that be through the nurses and the doctors or directly. Lord, we just ask for healing. We ask, Lord, that they will find out what the problem is. But more importantly, Lord, we just ask that he will just experience you where he is right now. Lord, we pray for Rita and for all the family at this concerning time. Lord, may your peace surround them and may your presence just bring them joy. For we ask it in and through your precious name. Amen. Amen. And we're going to sing again a lovely song, again that's come out through lockdown, Living Hope. I invite you to stand, actually, and join in together, Living Hope. Thank you. Turn to hell. 
please be seated. Who could imagine so great a mercy we, we've just watched and sung and joined in with? Who could imagine what was going to happen 18 months ago? 18 months ago when we, we sort of thought, well, okay, it's only happening in China. Nothing's, it's not going to affect us. And here we are 18 months later. Who could imagine? And then imagine it for the Israelites as this story which we read and we know and we tell our children, this story of the 12 spies. But the Israelites, possibly 18 months before, we don't know quite the time scale, they've, they've had 400 years in slavery. 400 years in Egypt being made slaves because God had blessed them and multiplied them and God was using them. 400 years of slavery. And suddenly, this nut job, Moses, turns up. Now, Moses has been born to, and, uh, as an Israelite and brought up by Pharaoh's daughter or the previous Pharaoh's daughter. And then Moses had, had run away and 40 years later, this nut turns up and says to Pharaoh, let my people go. And over a period of time, the Israelites who are being picked on and made to work harder and harder and harder by the, the Egyptians, they experience some amazing things. In the midst of their oppression, in the midst of their captivity, in the midst of their lockdown, they experience God doing miracles. The nine miracles that um, are recorded in Exodus. They experience Moses time and time going to Pharaoh and God acting. They experience God acting against the Israelites but keeping them safe. And then they experience most of all a exa exit, sorry, an exit from Egypt. And they cross the Red Sea. God parts the Red Sea so that they can cross in the height of, the, of the, the, the flowing season for the sea. God parts it. Why? And then he brings them out and they worship God at the foot of the mountain. Yes, they get it wrong. But in a very short space of time, here they are on the cusp of the promised land. And Moses says to 12 spies, go and look what God has promised it wasn't even 400 years before. We have to go right the way back to Abraham. And God says to Abraham, you will live in this land. God says to Abraham, you will dwell here. This is your land. I promise you this land. And here they are right on the edge of the promised land. And what does Moses do? Well, he, he represents the whole of the people, 12 12 spies, one from each tribe, and they go and explore. And no one disputes what they saw. Nobody disputes what the spies came back with, the report that they gave. They came back and they said, this is a great land. As we were graphically um, demonstrated earlier, you know, two men carrying the bunches of grapes because they were so bountiful so plentiful, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land that had more than enough to sustain them, a land that was everything that they'd imagined from what God had said. And so nobody, none of the 12 spies, argued about the report and about the promise of God for them. But what they argued about was what to do with the report. You see, because 10 of the spies, 10 of the spies said, this is a bad land. And if we go there, we look like grasshoppers. If we go there, we will be devoured. If we go there, we will surely be defeated. And uh, a bit like they, they spent time saying, oh, just send us back to Egypt. We cannot do this. We accept what God has promised. We accept the possibilities, but we cannot do it. But Caleb and Joshua, they stand up in front of the people 
And these two spies say, we can do it because it's God has promised us. We can do it because it's what God's word says. We can do it because our God is bigger than the giants. For those of you who have children who have um, lived through the VeggieTales series, whether you, you know, at home or, or here, the VeggieTales series and that, that great song when the vegetables sing, God is bigger than the bogeyman. You know, the bogeyman that lives under the bed and all the children are scared of it and they, they learn the lesson. God is bigger than the bogeyman. And God is bigger than the giant. Whatever giants are out there, God is bigger than. Joyce Mayer says this, Sadly, we often stare at our great-sized problems instead of at our God. We often stare at our great-sized problems instead of our God. And these ten spies were saying, we can't do it. Two spies were saying, we can. And the, the reason Caleb and Joshua were saying, we can, was because although they had been born in slavery, they had seen, along with the other ten spies, they had seen the miracles of God. They'd seen the power of God at work. They'd seen that God had led them to this point. They'd been part of that worship. They'd been part of what Moses was doing with God's power working through him. And their conclusion was, we can do this. Whereas for the ten, their conclusion was, I'm scared. They're too big. The cities are too powerful. Thank you, Hannah, for reminding us of that. You see, they'd heard God's promise. They'd experienced God's power. And for 10, they came to the conclusion that we cannot do this. And what happened? Well, they, they got the rest of the Israelite people to say, we can't do this. And so the people turned around from the, from the cusp of the promised land, from looking over at all God had promised with all of those possibilities in, in the power of an amazing almighty God, the people of God turned around and went back into the wilderness. And for 40 more years, they wandered in the wilderness and a whole generation was lost. The only people that came out of Egypt that went into the promised land were the two that trusted, Caleb and Joshua. The rest were lost. And you know, I think for us here as a church and wherever we are and wherever we're watching, for us as individuals, as God's people, we have a choice today. We're coming out of a pandemic. And even if we weren't coming out of a pandemic, God is revealing amazing promises to us through his word. If you're reading God's word every day, you will get promises revealed to you and you have a choice. You have a choice to either say, I'm going to trust your word, God. I'm going to trust that you will lavish grace upon me. I'm going to trust that you will only work for my good. I'm going to trust that you will hold me whatever problems come my way. I'm going to trust that you are never going to let me go. I'm going to trust that the death of Jesus is sufficient so that I can experience all that you have in store for me. We have a choice to say that, or we have a choice to say, no, it's okay, I'm going back to build a sandcastle. We can say, I'm going back to the desert. And the only thing I, that came to me, one of the things that came to me, when, when we, we have this choice and when we make this choice, if we choose to say no to God, then there's going to be a lost generation in heaven. There's going to be a lost generation. I'm not just talking about teenagers as we tend to now. I'm talking about people right across the board, ages right across the board. There's going to be 
you know, lost generation of people who will not experience the grace and mercy and love of our Savior. Why? Because you chose not to trust and you chose not to follow. And friends, it will be tough. It will be difficult. There will be giants. There will be walled cities. We will make mistakes. You will make mistakes. But our God is bigger and stronger and his promises stand true. And as we're up the mountain, viewing the promises of God today, we can choose to trust and take possession and to grab hold of. Or you can go back into the desert and be lost. The choice is yours, the choice is mine. We may not understand fully, and that's okay. But we know the promised land. We know what God is calling us to. And one day, God is going to make sense of it all. One day, we will realize that by trusting, God is more than faithful. We will realize that his promises hold true. And as we, we think about our choice today, as we think about the promises of God and as we, we perhaps in our hearts join in with that good old Salvation Army chorus when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And we, we, we join in that one day you'll make sense of it all, Jesus. You have a choice to make daily. And I have a choice to make daily. What will your choice be? Let's join together.
greater vision of grace. And in a moment we shall be changed. In a moment we shall be changed. In a moment we shall be changed. Father God, we are standing on the edge of something amazing, looking at your promises with the experiences of your protection, with the experience of your leading, with the experiences of the miracles you have given to us. We thank you for what you have done in the past. And as we look at your promises, as we look at what you want for us, what you have promised, I pray that for myself, for each one of us, we will know that we can go forward and conquer because of who you are. I pray that none of us will will choose to go back into the desert and wander. And Father, I thank you because when we choose to go and to conquer, we discover that your power, your grace, your mercy is more than enough for anything we will face. May we experience more of Jesus each day as we put our trust in him. Amen. Amen. So as we close our worship, another one of my favourite songs, uh, but this time we're going back many, many years. Soldiers of our God of eyes, storm the forts of darkness on the edge of something amazing. Let's go and do it together. Amen.
Amen. And there's only one benediction from Jude. And now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week. Amen.